Hello my friends all over the world wherever you are. Today I'm going to make a juice using gobo root or burdock root. My wife calls this elephant tail. It's available at most Asian markets. Then the first thing I'm going to do is cut this into manageable pieces after I wash it. As you can see I've cut the gobo root into about one foot lengths and I will put two of these in each of my juices each time I make a large batch. In addition to my gobo root, also called burdock root, I have my carrots, French sorrel, 190 grams of turmeric, one whole garlic head, a couple of radishes and three avocado pits, plus some ginger, two medium-sized beets with the tops, and here I have greens from both collards and uh, broccoli plants plus one head of broccoli. So let's make some juice. Now before I start making juice I want to point out that I'm using the front loading feed tube. With this feed tube you will absolutely never get blowback up to your ceiling. At the very worst it may spit out six inches or so if you drink something like cantaloupe or watermelon but it will never go up to your ceiling. You'll never have to climb a ladder up clean your ceiling. Here I have a near zero blowback cutter with over 80 teeth cut into the cutter. I'm going to install that. And then I'll assemble the juicer with the thermometer plugged into the left side. And I'm going to feed in a few ice cubes to cool down the cutter and the feed tube. continue with collard greens. I can put one in it, one leaf in at a time because they're such huge leaves. I'll continue with my collards and my uh, broccoli leaves. juice is starting to work hard and that's an indication that you have to clean your grid. So I'm going to put in three ice cubes and then clean the grid. Remember to feed your ice cubes in slowly. And you clean the grid, you put that in the palm of your hand, clean it on both sides. Reassemble and continue. More broccoli greens. You notice how much faster that goes through once you clean your grid and the rest of my collard greens. I'm going to follow that with the rest of my turmeric. start with my French sorrel greens and alternate that with the burdock root or the gobo root. I've already washed this, remember to wash it. I will continue with my French sorrel. Remember, don't put too many greens in at one time. Less is more. I'll take the bowl. Continue with French sorrel. Next 
so we'll clean the grid and we'll install the number two grid instead of the J grid which I'd use for greens. Notice how I'm prying this out with the tip of the knife. Clean it on both sides. And I'm going to put the J grid, 3 16 inch holes, in the sink and clean it later and put in the 1 8 inch holes or the number two grid. And we'll continue with the areas. Now one thing I like to do, because there's a puddle of juice down here, you can either pour it into your bowl like so, or put some carrots through and let the pulp come out. Carrot pulp absorbs this juice very, very well. Let some pulp come out again to get this juice down here. There we go. So here's the last of my carrots. Now I'm going to point out why I love this front loading feed tube. You can see in here if there's any produce not shred and I see the carrots are shred pretty well but there's a couple of clumps in there not as shred as I want it to be so I'm going to put in a couple of fingers full of pulp and force that last produce through. Now I'm going to clean my grid, my grid holder, the feed tube and then mix my produce and make some juice. So the first thing I'll do is unplug the thermometer and then I'm going to clean the feed tube of any remaining pulp in there and the cutter of course as you can see it needs it and then with a long enough knife I'm going to clean out the feed tube now I want to point out that every juicer sold by Whole Health Foundation comes with this cleaning brush and that brushes off any remaining pulp and anything that's going to stick to the feed tube and in addition you want to clean your cutter and make sure you get the pulp out of the end set screw and you also want to clean with the wet brush the round escutcheon Now, you could wipe that with a paper towel, but I have a, um, a spray nozzle in my kitchen, so I'm going to clean that off this way. The next step is to mix the pulp, and I get a good mix by rotating the bowl in both directions. step is to take the cloths, bring my folding container out so that it overhangs and doesn't touch the copper, the uh, countertop, and then put three scoops, which is about a cup to a cup and a half of produce in each cloth, and I'm going to press two cloths full at one time because you get better pressure that way. So here's one cloth, we'll fold that and we'll set it aside, and then another cloth full of three scoops. Later we'll put only two scoops in because we're not going to throw away the pulp and I'll demonstrate why later. I can tell you why now and that's because we can get 10% more juice by folding the cloths on the spent pulp a little tighter and you actually get more nutrients and better nutrients with that last 10% of the press. So into the press, centered left to right, centered front to back, all the way back, back and up a little. And while that's pressing, I will prepare more cloths full of pulp. Now when you're on your last cloth, advance your hydraulic lever all the way. And here's my six cloth less work method. This goes forward, this goes over, the spent cloths go on top. Two more cloths in the center of the tray. Make sure it's on the press plate properly. 
centered front to back, center left and right, all the way back. Back it off a little. Now the reason you back it off is you don't want that to go up too fast. If it goes up too fast, your claws have a risk of slipping apart. So, two scoops on top of the spent pulp. You never throw away your pulp until the very end. Nice tight package. When I'm on my last cloth, advance that all the way. And two scoops on top of the old pulp. Now here's my six cloth less work method again. This goes forward, that goes over, the spent clouds go on top, and two more cloths in the press, and we continue this way until we're done. All the way back, back it off a little bit, and continue putting two scoops. Later it might be one scoop, it all depends how thick this patty is. Keep your eye on the bowl, you don't want it to overflow. And again, when you're on your last cloth, advance that all the way. Because my bowl is full, we'll put these into bottles. This goes forward, that goes over. The spent clouds go on top. And we'll turn that off and put these in, this juice into bottles. Now I'm filling this from the back side so the camera gets a good look. And I'm leaving about 10% for filtered or distilled water. It's especially important to dilute your juice for a diabetic. You don't want to get too much sweetness in there. Now let's make more juice. Pull the tray forward, seat it on the press plate properly. Two more cloths full of pulp in the center. Left to right centered, front to back centered, adjust it if need be, all the way back, back it off a little. Turn on the machine. Now uh, this patty looks like it's getting pretty thick, so I think what I'm going to do is put only one and a half scoops on here, and later only one scoop. You don't want that patty to be too thick. If it's too thick, you won't be able to fit two clouds in there. And again, one and a half scoops. cloth, advance that all the way. Make sure that's on the press plate properly. I felt it slip back. Centered, left to right, front to back. Adjust if need be, all the way back, back it off. Now I see some puddling in here, so I'm going to hold this very firmly. And pour that juice in there. Now while this is pressing, I'm going to take this spent pulp and repackage it into a tight ball and I'm going to show you how I can get over 10% more juice using a health health foundation, a whole health foundation on the juicer. The last 10% of your produce is the most important. Notice my folding technique. And I'm going to do that in both directions. That's that all the way. Turn it upside down, flatten it, set it aside, and continue repackaging the spent pulp. As you can see, I have three double packets of repackaged pulp. This is pulp that most people would throw away. The reason they throw it away is nobody's told them there's more juice in there. Well, I'm telling you now, you're going to get the best quality juice and about 10% more if you do what I'm doing now. This is repackaged spent pulp. Centered left to right, centered front to back. This is very, very important. Make sure it's on the tray properly. All the way back, back it off and turn on the machine. Now, I'm using a measuring beaker to measure how much more juice we got. So far we have four ounces, looks like we can get about five. As long as you have a steady stream, leave the juicer on. 
And because of this solid bottom plate, you could leave it up all day if you wanted to. So far, eight ounces. Looks like I'm going to get about nine or ten ounces out of two cloths. I think I'm going to repackage these and um, press them again. Well, there's ten ounces. I almost got that on the countertop that time. We'll put in two more cloths. Two more cloths full of pulp. Right in the center. Left to right, front to back, all the way back. Back it off a little bit. Now you can always tell if a patty needs repackaging if the edges are wet, and they usually are. So we'll fold the wet edges into the center and repackage and then press these again. Now as you can see I have three double packets of pulp repackaged and I'm going to put this in the press and press again see how much more juice we get, can get. We've got 14 ounces so far and right in the center check that it's on the plate properly all the way back back it off a little. Well I'd say that's a significant amount more juice by repackaging it a second time. We had 14, we're up to 16, we'll probably get about 17 or more. Let's add two more clouds in the press. Boy, that's a tight fit. Make sure it's on the press plate properly. Centered, left to right, centered, front to back, all the way back, back it off a little bit. 16 ounces so far. Well, there's 18 ounces, but I'm going to back that off because I don't want this to overflow. And we'll pour this into the uh, container on the left and then continue pressing. Almost 24 extra ounces. That's two extra bottles of juice. Well, let's put these into bottles. I'm filling these bottles up with distilled water for my water distiller. Right to the top so there's no air in the bottle. I even let it overflow a little bit. Now I want to point out a couple of things that most people forget to do. The juice tray needs to be cleaned around the edges because some pulp usually sticks there. Mini pulp or residue of juice. So you clean around the edges and in the groove as best you can. And then you fold all your cloths in thirds and press the water out. But before that, you clean the upper plate and the side plate, and I'll show you how I do that in a minute. Now, I've already folded the cloths, so I'll put them here. Now, with a clean, wet sponge or a paper towel, you clean the upper plate, and you can see that it wasn't clean. I hope you can see that, and the side plate as well. The upper plate is the most neglected part of the cleaning process when you're cleaning a juicer. So we'll put these cloths in here and press the water out. And I'm leaving the folding tray down here to collect that water. And we got droplets, so we'll take those in, put them in a plastic bag and into the freezer, they'll go. And the reason we put them in the freezer is germs and airborne contaminants cannot grow in the freezer. Now as you can see we have 5, 10, 11 bottles of juice plus enough for a taste test. And I want to remind you that two of these bottles came from repackaging the already pressed pulp and getting over 10% more juice. So let's do a taste test. Well my friends, we'll do a taste test. And this is my formula with gobo root or burdock root as it's known in America. Let's see what it tastes like. Mmm, I love juice with French sorrel in it. I can definitely taste the French sorrel. Well, my friends, I hope you like what you've seen. And if you do, please tell a friend. If you'd like to phone me to buy a juicer or parts or get some advice, my phone number is 760-753-0321. My email address is developtrust at cox.net. And my webpage is wholehealthfound.com. See you in the next video.